Alright, so I'm Becca Settle. Most of you have probably seen me, and if you don't know me, it's like I've been around. I'm a second year psychology student now, which has been pretty fun, let's call that. Uh, I don't really mind. So, yeah, I'm running for like vice president this year. So, what I want to really do is to like join the council because I feel like the society has been like really welcoming this year. So I was a part of the society last year, but I didn't really attend. This year, though, I've sort of like really got involved. There's been a lot of people here. There's been a lot of new people here, which I've really liked to see. And there's been like everybody's just been so diverse. Like you haven't come here and there's been like one type of gamer or there's been one type of game being played. You have people who are doing handheld, people who are like purely console. You've got the PC master race people. You've just got like <laughs> some like <money>. yeah. <laughs> And it's just been really welcoming. I've been able to find new people and new friends. Ish. <laughs> and I've been able to like bring friends here and really have a fantastic time. I think being vice president would really help give back to that and really like make it an enjoyable experience. Um, also, there are things in the society that have gone fantastically and things I really do think that could be improved. Although I see the things that like the council this year have tried to add and implement, sometimes it hasn't worked out and I just love to see that actually realised so it's not just like the dreams of this council, it's also the dreams of the councils that have come before and what they've wanted to make LGS into, which would be fantastic. Also, I feel like I'm rambling through all these but um, working with these lovely people over here who have done fantastic presentations so far, <laughs> I just think that they'd be a fantastic group to like <laughs> and Jackman over there, don't start crying. <laughs> um, I think they'd be a fantastic and dynamic group to work with because you've got a lot of new faces as well as some old faces. You know, you've got the old really guys. Really old. To say. <laughs> 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 right, you want to like the next slide. What I'd like to say I bring to the society is determination and reliability. Usually I'm here every week and to the events, which have been fantastic. I'm approachable and proactive, meaning that for one, I'd like to think that I'm really easy to talk to. I've talked to quite a lot of people here, in fact, even if people haven't really known my name. Everyone's been like, oh yeah, this and that, and yeah, let's do that. just socialise. It's been fantastic like that. Um, with like the determination, reliability, it's been a lot about like what skills I can bring from past experiences. So I've been on councils before, not university councils, unfortunately, although I'd love to change that but like councils in schools where a lot of it is like presenting to people, a lot of it is like taking feedback, seeing what's good and what's bad, taking on, those, on board those criticisms as well as the strengths and saying this is what they want and this is what we need to do and this is also what other people have been unsure and what they want to do. Organised and practical, people who know me might know I'm a little bit of an ass for that because I get a stickler if things are going according to plan or if people are fluffing things and I'll be like, they're fluffing things. But alright, if you're fluffing things that you're trying hard, I'll be like, fantastic, but here's how you do it a little bit better. Uh, but also if you don't know what you're doing, I am a person who will just go, right, love what you're trying to do, but let's get you to a point where you can do it. So I'd like to motivate people when they feel worried about what they can and cannot do and just go, you can. Everyone's capable of the roles they've gone for today literally everybody, but they might be worried, they might be a little bit scared about it, and when it comes down to it, when you break down what those roles are, it's fine, they can do it, and they just need the confidence and the boost to say, yes, you're capable of this, yes, you can do this, oh, you just need to pick up these skills, yes, you'll be fully well capable of doing that as well, um, and just, like, really motivating people, like, work cohesively as a group. Punctual and flexible, I usually have a lot of time on my hands, which I'd like to dedicate to the society and people who also know me in psychology, who are meant to be here, but unfortunately for them. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Lie to me. Um, that I will pull them up on people being late and I will be there. So if somebody says, right, we're doing this now, we're doing this then, we need to get this sorted by that point, it will be done by that point because you have to have set deadlines to get anything done, and if you don't have a deadline, it's going to go down the drain. So, like, having deadlines, sorting things out, organising things, creating, like, plans, fantastic with that. And I'm enthusiastic. I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> Hello. Right, next one. 
Ambitions. Yeah. Firstly, I would love to like attract new demographics to LGS because we like we have sort of like groups which are people from previous years. We have new emerging groups that have come in this year. And from what I know, talking around to people, this year has been a bit of a meh year in terms of new members. So not as many as people would like to have seen as a society for the university as a whole. There just hasn't been like the reception they thought it'd be. So I'd love to like try and tap that more and maybe like offer different events, maybe more accessible to students. Like a lot of us are handheld gamers because it's cheaper. So why not focus more on handheld gaming, have handheld night maybe? and like get things to do that so people can maybe do um, one versus one battles and PvP and do more things that are just like much more accessible to students who might not have the cash flow to go, yes I've got a console, yes I'll get another game, oh the next game's out, the new game's out, and get that. Because that can be very difficult if you're on a student budget. Secondly, attract new opportunities and benefits for the members of LGS. From hearing previous years and what's been doing this year, I've been really impressed with the sponsorships from Walkabout and then talking to Game More and getting that all involved. I've been really impressed and really enjoyed the socials that we've had, especially the drinking socials, because I think that's been a fantastic icebreaker for people in LGS. I'd love to improve that. I'd love to do more of them. I'd love to start working with other people's passions. So you have people who love jams. So get them involved in it and get them talking more. And in fact, don't let it fall down through the year have it so people keep talking going, oh well my friend does this, can we include this some way? My friend does that society, can we include that some way? Because if people could just keep bringing more friends and making more of like a community, I think it would really help as a whole for it to be like much more of a welcoming and bigger community. Uh, also thinking about getting like benefits for members throughout the summer because that's when we'll have to do the legwork. So talking to more organisations that have interest to gamers through the summer to see if they can offer like more benefits for existing gamers or like maybe discounts at game and things like that. Or even looking at like uh, the 24 hour events which we get lots of what we order a ton of dominoes in. So why can't we start talking to dominoes and saying we're doing a massive order, can you give us a massive discount on that? Because it's as a it's one, it's a charity, two, it's like a um, like a whole group so they've, they're going to make a profit anyway so you could ask them saying look can we get a bit of money off here can we do this can we offer this to our members can we say this and just basically like focusing on what making a member or like making the benefits of being a member even better and yeah I think that's it like saying that welcome successes that we've had this year because through seeing the 24 hour events doing some of the nights some of the nights have been absolutely fantastic like um, bring your own games night, that was absolutely amazing. Uh, there was also things like poker night at the very beginning of the year and that was like massive turnout and that was fantastic. Look about what made them great which is like the social aspect and then start going can we have more of them? Are people going to like this more? So again picking up on feedback from current members, attracting new members and also like including many more like socials and nights and benefits for people who want to join us because I know that I, I can talk down and sit to anybody and I say do you game and the first thing we know and they'll say have you game and I'll go yes and I'll go is there a game you know and they'll go I got obsessed with Professor Layton and I went then you game that is it they're as simple as that that, that is gaming gaming is not something that is exclusive to like one person or one group anymore everyone games and they, they should be able to get involved in this as much as anybody else because that's what we're all here for and I think that that'd be fantastic and to like involve them more in that. If you want to do that. But that's really sort of like what I have to say. And I'm just going to thank you for your time for listening to me. And I'd be absolutely honoured if you think I'd make a good VP next year. Yeah, as Jacqueline said, we'll be taking a very specific okay. question about the presentation. Um, but if, you, if there's a question more suited to both of them, then Let's save it for later. Okay, so you said about the handheld games nights and things, which is like this really good idea. Um, how, like, at the Freshers' Fair and things, how do you personally plan on attracting those members straight away? Kind of how do you plan on? I think you've got to appeal to individual and individual basis. You'll go, why do you game? Or what games do you like playing? Seeing that and go, oh, so you play this game, or oh, you play that console, that's fantastic. We have a social for that, why don't you come along? But, like, 
do this and we do that. And I think that's, that's where the drinking socials come in because everybody knows things are a lot less awkward with alcohol. Just, they are. It's point. Um, and just doing that, it's like, gets people to relax a lot more within the society. And then, because the thing is, you use that as icebreaker, you've made some friends, and then you sort of like go, well, yeah, let's just go as a group. And go, and because that's what people do here. People don't yet tend to come as individuals to the society. They come as a group, and they have their friends coming. And so if you can attract that group of friends and say, what games do you love playing like together? And go, we can incorporate that, or we'd love to try some of that. Then I think that that'd be very receptive from, or very good from the onset. Yep. Uh, given the sort of prevalence of smartphone gaming you get quite a bit of now, would you incorporate that as a sort of part of the handheld playing, or would that come under its own sort of separate well, promotion? I was thinking about that, and I did talk to somebody about that, because the thing is that you could have fantastic mobile games, but it's sometimes also tainted with the pay-to-win microtransactions bit, which is a bit point of contention in the game. <laughs> But I think that mobile gaming could definitely be involved in handheld nights and things like that. I mean, you have fantastic games like Hearthstone, you have Sorcery, you have, uh, what else do I play? Whale Trail, well that's like, it's me, it's just a fun game. Um, but it's definitely something that's like cross-platform, because you can play with other people on them, so they're definitely involved. Well. <coughs> you said that um, your friends didn't come today. No. Yeah. And then one of your main points was you wanted friends to come. Yeah. I was kind of wondering how, you know, you would get people and their friends to get off, you know, their laptops or their computers and kind of come to a, you know, place where they might not know people. That's mean because they're ill right now. I wasn't talking about your friends. I was talking about oh, no, in general. How dare you? Don't you consult them? Now. You have to tell them. I hear a voice. Mainly because people are worried to join, like, they see this massive group and they go, can I, can I join in? Is it accessible? That's what they worry about. That's why I was talking about socials before, and that's why, like, especially, like, more, like, less formal socials would really work for that, because it just breaks down that barrier of going, oh, I don't know, maybe. And if you hit them early on at the very beginning of the year, because you get to university and you know nobody, and you're like, uh, hi, yeah. And best thing to do is go out drinking with people because you don't know them yet. It's the fantastic way to find out about people. And it's sort of a way we can sort of market ourselves. So we promote ourselves in those events going, we're fantastic people to just hang out with. And I go, oh, actually, this, this could really work for me. This could. Even if some of them do get ill a lot of the time. <laughs> right, wrap up then. No, no, no. Now, um, you said you were on a council at school. How, what qualities from that will assist you in this position? I've had to get used to a lot of presenting. I had to get used to a lot of managing of other people, especially like if you had a group of people who, who were a bit disor um, disorganised, going, I'd love to do this, and then another person going, I'd love to do that, but they don't know how to work together to make equally both ideas happen. Then I was the person who'd go step in going, right, you both want pretty much the same thing, or you both want these fantastic ideas. You don't have to fight about who's, whose ideas get to be put forward. We can do it, you just have to do this, and you have to do that, and it's very easy, because all you have to do for them is break it down to small chunks. So you give them tasks to do, instead of going, here's this massive goal. If you give them a plan and a task, they're much easier, and they're much more receptive to that, because they're like, yeah, I see, I see the through line, because what you have is a lot of people here coming up with, I'd love to do this, I'd love to do that, but they haven't got a plan for it. They haven't <coughs> planned to like take it from here all the way to making it happen. And that's where I like try and step in, go, I can make that a plan that starts from presenting saying I'd love to do this and take it straight forward to go and here's it happen happening for them. Is that right? Right. We we're, we're done now. Okay. We're done, Bobby. We're done. We're done.